Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we are here with another commitment for K-State. We came to you yesterday. We talked about one addition, and then just a few hours later, the Cats, they landed another player in the transfer portal, and this is a big, big get for them in two really different ways. One, because it's a really talented player that was highly sought after, and on the flip side, it also comes at a spot where K-State absolutely needed somebody that could come in and play immediately. And there's no doubt in my mind that a chore chore can play instantly. 6'9 is how he stands, so he's got the size that you're looking for, another player that has that type of stature, but he really can do everything. He was a high scorer at Samford last year. He grabbed over six boards a game. He shot it well from outside when the opportunity came. He can do a lot, and he was a top 20 transfer in the portal. K-State was able to get him, and I, I said yesterday uh, when it happened on Twitter, like, it's not out of nowhere that K-State was able to get a chore chore or that they were in for him, but it was out of nowhere that it was just like, oh, yep, a chore chore is committed. Like, there was really no buildup to it. Like, okay, here he comes. He's on campus. He's, you know, had a good time. Like, nothing came out from it other than just, oh, boom, he's here. It's done. And honestly, that's probably the best way uh, things could have gone for K-State in terms of how the the portal season has been for them at times. It's just get a guy in, no pomp and circumstance, and then boom, uh, he comes through and commits. So to you, Drew, what does this commitment mean for K-State? It's a huge addition, like you said. Uh, if if a chore chore has fans, I, I am one. If a chore chore has no fans, I, I am dead. He can do a little bit of everything on the basketball court, ha- has good assist numbers as well. I mean, that, that's something that kind of goes under the radar. He had a game that he had eight assists in against Wofford earlier this year. Uh, he's a really good rebounder, can shoot the ball a little bit when he's open, can block shots. Like, there's no real, like, glaring weakness, I think, to his game outside of maybe being a little skinny. Uh, because he he's only 222 pounds at 6'9". But he can do a little bit of everything. He's going to come in and probably be one of K-State's top two, top three players right away. And the really intriguing thing is K-State's still kind of going after another big that we'll probably talk about in a few minutes. That he could probably play the four spot and kind of do what Naquan Tomlin did at K-State. And I think that that makes him even more intriguing because he had been playing the five the entire season at Samford. So if he can play the four and kind of be that Naquan Tomlin kind of role, I think that there's even more potential to be unlocked. And I think that that makes him even more intriguing and more fun. I mean, I I posted it when uh, he committed to K-State on the boards that I said that uh, Chora Chora was one of my favorite players in the transfer portal just in general. So to have him land at K-State is even more fun. Yeah, and he he played on a Sanford team that after a couple of early losses this year, uh, they got going and they just, you know, the inferior opponents for the most part, but they blew past them and then they made it to the NCAA tournament. We saw them in round one go down to the wire with KU and Achor Achor played well in that game, 23 points, eight boards. And so you know that he can do it because he carried the load for Sanford in that game against KU. And so... You know he can do it once. You know the talent is there. Now it's a question, okay, can you repeat it and come through and do it? I think given what he has around him and what we've seen, it is probably likely that he can do it. And he was a junior college teammate of Naquan Tomlin at Chipola. So these are uh, there, there's a little bit of a connection there. And I, I just think that you trust what can be done here with a chore chore. And, and I'll show the roster for everybody because we've talked a lot about how you're constructing things. Two open spots remain in terms of scholarships that can be used. And look at what K-State has added. They have added four players that averaged double-figure scoring last year. And then the other thing that I noted last night was they've also added five players that their three-point percentage would have been good for best on K-State's team a season ago. So you've added high-volume players that can fill it up, know how to score for you, uh, B impact type of guys. And certainly Doug McDaniel and Achora Chor are the two highest because, you know, Achora Chor is going up a level in terms of going from a mid major to uh, the Big 12, but he's the caliber of player that fits it. 
for CJ Jones and Max Jones, it's going to be a little problem, a little bit more of an adjusting period. But still, you've added guys that have that scoring ability, and then the shooting that's around them is a big boost as well because that was probably the biggest missing link to K-State season last year was if they just would have been able to shoot it from three, even a lick, uh, they probably win a couple more games and they're probably sitting in a much different spot. So this roster has been elevated in a couple of key ways and it sets up now for K-State to try and use these two open scholarship spots. Uh, and a chore chore, I think, takes a lot of pressure off of this staff in terms of what they have to go out and try to find. So with the two open spots that are left and knowing what you have with the roster that's been created and who will be on the floor like a chore, uh, who who do you think K-State should be targeting and what does that profile of player look like? Uh, so for, for who they should be targeting, there there aren't like a ton of names. Like I'll, I'm like, oh yeah, they should really go after uh, this player. But uh, Yugana Onyesu from Kentucky just makes a lot of sense. And as somebody that case it's been linked to, uh, he played uh, 24 games for Kentucky, I believe, starting 14 of them. Another elite rim protector, a good rebounder. And, and that's the intrigue. That's name that really intrigues me because he's somebody that you could maybe move David Gasson to that, that sixth, seventh man role. And could you imagine that that lineup with a chore and on Yesu? Uh, that that's a lot of length, a lot of athleticism in the front court, and then you probably need another wing. But th- that those two are probably the most uh, important spots left. I think that you need one wing, one big, and, and if you can swing big and get two s- additional starters or starter types, I think that that's really where the ceiling raises to where. I wouldn't mind adding another big, even if they do not get on Yasu, but having another big that could probably be in the backup minutes probably doesn't increase the ceiling as much, I think, as it landing like on Yasu and then another starting caliber wing. Yeah. And, and so, in terms of looking for a wing, we know that Arthur Kaluma went is going through the draft process and we know that he's in the transfer portal, but we also know that a number of these guys. That have gone that went through the draft process and ended up in the portal, they're doing it as kind of more of an insurance move. I mean, do you see a world where Arthur Kaluma one would come back to K State and two, uh, that would be something that would make sense for both parties? Because as we know, last year uh, the the Ish Masood situation now totally different. Like Kaluma's a, a higher profile player than Masood, but it was Masood's in the portal and Jerome Tang was pretty open and just was like, hey. If it makes sense for us to come back, like we'll we'll be here. But uh, the role was going to be different, and Ishmael thought he had a better outcome at Georgetown, and maybe he did for what he was looking for. Uh, do you envision that same type of thing playing out for Kaluma, or do you think it's hey the roster is kind of being built, and it's just time for that hard reset? We're moving on from guys from last year's team. I, I think that there is a legit scenario where Arthur Kaluma can come back to K State. But it, it's a delicate process right now, especially because they they only have two spots remaining, and you know that they're not going to stop recruiting, and, and stop or and stop recruiting for Arthur Kaluma's spot to be taken by somebody else. So it's one of those where you probably would like an answer on both sides within the next few days, and probably pretty likely, I I would imagine that both sides kind of already know what they want to do. And then they will probably just go from there because I, I just, I feel like because of where the roster sits and where they probably still need a starting caliber wing, that it would be smarter to go ahead and try and grab one now instead of wait on our wait on Arthur Kaluma to make a decision. Yeah, I would, uh, I would, ag- I would agree with that. I think, you know, if, if that's something that wants to be explored and both sides want it to happen and it makes sense, go for it. But I would also say, don't wait around because, I really do think with what K-State has built here, now that you've added a chore, I I do think you're in a position where you feel pretty good. And the last thing you're missing is to me is like what you mentioned. Hey, it's, it's one more big guy because at the end of the day, you're still looking at the two tallest guys that are going to play at, you know, meaningful minutes for you are only six, nine. You would like to have a bigger guy in there that can come in and do some things. 
uh, and also to give those guys some breaks because that's the thing. The depth isn't fully built up at that position because you'd basically just be relying on Bay Fall coming in and playing, and we've talked about it before, but Bay Fall only played nine games last year. He didn't play that much. Like There are still some serious developing that has to go down there. So find another big and then uh, whatever else is out there go and get it and see if you can make it happen. Cause I, I am confident with what this team has that they can, they can be successful next season. Now there just might be some strain on some guys to play numerous minutes. Yeah. I think that even this roster as it's currently constructed is kind of being a little bit undervalued. And I I've talked about this with a few people last night, just looking at what John Rothstein has in his top 45 of the preseason. It surprised me a little bit that K-State isn't in the list because I'll, I'll pose this question to you because this is a team that I called out from the jump of why is this team ranked so highly, but K-State is not. Would you take this K-State roster as it's currently constructed with two open spots or Cincinnati's roster who John Rossine has at 27? Yeah, this one. This one with, so- without a doubt. Cincinnati didn't lose anybody to the portal, but also didn't add any impact players. And it was a team that finished 11th in the big 12 last year. And they're just running it back. And John Ross team has them at 27 in case they not in his top 45. Yeah. I thought I, I found that kind of odd. I'll be interested to see if he updates that uh, in the near future. I know he does it constantly, but and I thought maybe he would yesterday because he, he tweeted about it last night after the chore news had happened. I was like, okay, let's see where K state is in here. I think this team right now, as they're set up, they're in a good spot and they can they can compete and they can be a top 25 team because the high-end players of, of Doug McDaniel and Achora Achora, they certainly warrant that. And then I just think that this is a this team is built to be a legit team. I think we see the pieces fitting together better where last year it was okay what they hauled in and, and what they had. Like the collection of talent on K-State's roster last year was not bad but the pieces just did not fit together. Now I think we can see a world where these pieces, they fit together pretty well. And obviously if you get some depth, uh, you can go from there. Yeah. If they land another starting caliber wing and another big, that is more apt to be able to play at least 15 minutes a game. I think that the ceiling really, really raises, but I, I really like how this roster is constructed and, as much as we love offense and I love offense and I know that how much you love offense, this team is going to be a nightmare on the defensive end with how much athleticism and how long some of the players are and just having that rim protection of a chore. And then as, as you add somebody like you and yes, who that's a guy that averaged almost three blocks a game. Yeah. So th- those are two elite rim protectors. So you can see the pieces really fit. And I'm really intrigued to see not only the offense because the shooting is great and the the ball handling and the playmaking is great, but the defensive side of the of things, I think KSA could be a really, really good defensive team. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's dig into Chora Chora a little bit more here because we've talked about some of the numbers, some of the accomplishments. And like we said, Samford was an NCAA tournament team last year that they were they were dominant after basically their first two games of the season and they took as we know, a hampered KU team to the limit. But again, that's Samford against KU. And that was a, you know, a pretty popular target of people saying, Hey, Samford should come up and get them. So let's, let's take a look here. I'll, I'll pull up some of the highlights from that game and you can kind of go over a little bit more drew uh, some of the things that you, you really like about a chore, chore and, and kind of what you think he can do to help K state out. Cause I, I, I mean, I was a little concerned about where K State was going to be able to find guys. Like this was a boomer bust type of deal to get a chore, and they were able to land him. And now you feel pretty confident moving forward about how things will will go with this team. Yeah, I I really like everything that he brings to the table on the offensive end because he's a bit of a matchup nightmare, and it's something that you kind of saw. And what I didn't really realize in the pre process of like digging into a chore a chore that him and Naquan Tomlin were both listed as guards for Chipola. <laughs> so you can really see where his guard side really comes out because he is a matchup nightmare. And if you don't have a big that can move their feet, I'm not really uh, adding uh, somebody that's on the floor right now for KU. 
but if you don't have a big that can move their feet, he can really take advantage. He's a good passer. He has a really good assist rate. He's good around the rim. Can shoot the three enough to where guys get kind of worried and you have to worry about him in the pick and pop game. But I, I worry a little bit about his release. So he shot a really good percentage, but I think some of that was just because he was really open. But I think that with how K-State's roster is constructed, he'll find more open looks. And if he can knock down 30 40% again on limited attempts, then I think that K-State's in a really good spot for him with that. And, and I mean, he just has really good body control. Yeah. And I think that that's an underrated thing with players, or especially when you get to the rim. If you have good body control, you're going to be a really good player. And, and I mean, that, that Samford team, it's no joke how they play. So people will say he only played 23 minutes. Like, why is that? They will press on a make or a missed basket. And that's one of the reasons that one of the reasons that they got back into the KU game was that they were starting to wear KU's players down because nobody on Sanford played more than 26 minutes. A chore played the third most minutes at 23. They found a way to get everybody like their max cap of minutes to where they could succeed the most. And, and a chores like uh conditioning and everything, not a concern for me that I only played 23 minutes. I, I would be surprised if most schools would have guys that could play more than 26, 27 minutes a game when they're constantly pressing on a make or a miss, because there aren't a lot of schools that out that are out there that will press on a missed basket. Yeah, I wouldn't have a, a ton of concern about it. And, and I just think that this is this really changes the dynamic of how you should feel about K-State's roster moving forward. And I look, in, in some ways, I, I don't want people to over embellish uh, the success that this was. Like, this was a really good win for K-State. It's a good thing for Jerome Tang and his staff. It illustrates that they can land these types of players because, again, he was – Highly sought after. A lot of people would have liked to have had this guy. Same type of deal with how they landed Doug McDaniel. But also, this you can still have a little bit of skepticism saying, you you really pushed it here. Because if a chore chore had decided to go somewhere else, you are in a really dire spot. So big that they came through. And uh, the, you know they deserve all the praise in the world for getting this thing done. Uh, but you can still certainly have a little bit of skepticism. And it's probably good to have a healthy amount of it moving forward and saying, okay, uh, this is a better step from last year where, you know, the roster is at a level now where you feel like it, it can compete. It's not going to take as long, but you, you would like to move that timeline up a little bit more. And the other thing that I would point out, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll mention this because I went and I put it together for everybody last night. So if you're a member over at KSO, head on over and you can find it. But I, I put together kind of the roster and scholarship chart for the next couple of years at K-State. Here's where the benefit lies. Right now, of the 13 guys that you have, or excuse me, of the 11 guys you have on scholarship out of 13 of them, three of them have no eligibility after this year. David Gasson, Max Jones, Achora Chor. But everybody else on the roster this coming season has at least two years to play. So this coming year and the year after that, we'll see what happens with any of the other guys that possibly are in the mix. I mean, the two names that we've brought up is like if Kaluma comes back, obviously it's his final year, he's gone. Uh, but on Yesu, it's a different type of deal where he's got multiple years of eligibility. So this was the one thing that I said when this portal process started for K-State. This roster is being built in a manner that is setting it up to have sustainability and to not have to make the portal as big of a deal next season where you're hopefully not looking you know, at one point having eight open scholarships or something you're sitting around going, okay, we can be pretty selective. We've got, you know, four or five open spots, maybe more, but as long as you retain kind of the meat of your roster and two or three really key rotation guys, then I think you can be comfortable moving forward. And K-State is setting themselves up to do that. So it's going to be really fascinating to see who they add with the last two spots. Yeah, I think that's a, an important thing to note is that this is going to be a, a good team, I think, this year, but the next season is where I think that you could really see K-State take off because they have so many guys that have multiple years. And you would think that another year and having a, a successful year could help them with the higher end transfer portal guys next year as well. 
So I, I'm really interested to see the last two spots because Onyesu has multiple years left, but we we're still waiting on kind of who that wing spot is going to be. So I'm excited to see what that entails. And the other, the last thing that I'll just say, and it's something that DY said yesterday and has kind of stuck with me a little bit that recruiting is hard. So celebrate the wins when you get them, because I mean, there are a lot of big schools that KSA beat out for a tour a tour and a lot of big schools that KSA beat out for Doug McDaniel at losing Khalif battle, losing Clifford Amore, both of those sucked. Like, but that's, I think why you need to have the perspective of celebrating the wins because not everybody bats a thousand, especially in the transfer portal era. Yeah. And certainly this year, the, either the secondary options or the the guys that were adjacent to the top end guys K State has brought in, it's been better results than what last year was. Where last year yeah. there was a pretty significant drop off from the whiffs of the the you know A quality players to what you went to next. This year, you know, if if you miss on Amori and again different styles of play, but kind of serving a similar role. You miss on Amori, but you land with a chore, a chore. I think that's fine. And honestly, like I was thinking about this last night, if you ask me who I would rather have, this is not a surprise to anybody because you already brought up how much I love offense and shooting, but like a chore, a chore is that guy. Like he, I think he has a higher upside for what he can do for you. And I think that's what K-State has a roster of right now is guys that, that have some fairly high upside and what they can do and actually – Multiple guys that can carry you. I, I I brought this up a lot last year with watching the or this past year with watching K State play. They just didn't have very many guys that could go out and carry the load for you at any point. Where you could look around at some of the other middle of the pack Big Twelve teams, uh, the teams that did sneak into the NCAA tournament. They had more guys that on any given night you said I wouldn't be surprised if he had fifteen points next to his name. K State only had three of those guys last year where you're like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys did something really good for you. And they also only had three guys that can make shots last year, and you just can't win with that. They certainly have more guys that can make shots this year, and they have at least more guys that I think will see the variability of their scoring totals uh, will will have a much higher ceiling than last year's team. Yeah, I I agree with that completely. I mean, there's probably four guys right now maybe five that I on any given night, I wouldn't be surprised had had double digit scoring. I would say Doug McDaniel, a chore, CJ Jones, Max Jones. And, and here's a, here's a wild card for you. Uh, your guy, Brendan Housen. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a game where he has double digit scoring because he's yeah. able to knock down four threes. Yeah, no, I, I have no doubt. He, I, he will definitely have a game at some point where he kind of catches fire and he does some things for him. So, uh, it's K State is in much better shape now with the addition of a chore chore, and again, should not be overlooked. Some of these these high upside type of plays where you don't really lose anything by having them on the roster because of how college basketball works. But like Moby Ek Garuka uh, with his addition yesterday, it's really a wild card on what he's going to be over the course of his career, but really next season. Uh, but you can, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with having a guy like that on on your bench somewhere and seeing what transpires. And Bay Fall falls into that same category. Both of those guys have three years of eligibility remaining. And in the case of Bay Fall, he even has his red shirt available. So a lot to take away, a lot to uh, continue to analyze with K-State basketball because they are not done yet. Still two open spots to try and fill out the roster. If you want to stay in the know on it, head over to kstateonline.com. Find us at on three. Drew, D.Y., everybody will keep you in the loop, plus plenty of football stuff going on as well as uh, transfer visitors are in this weekend. Just loads of stuff happening with K-State football and basketball right now. So the offseason really has not started yet. It's, you know, the games are not being played, but nothing has slowed down in terms of how K-State's attacking things. And it won't for the next month because official visits will be swinging in for a class of 25 football guys soon. So we'll have more on all that next week here on K-State Online. We'll try and get a Sunday show together for everybody this weekend as well and uh, try and see if we can get D-Wide to get involved so we can do a little something special there. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, if, if you want to know when that happens, just stay locked in KSO over at On3 or uh, get subscribed and turn on the notifications for the KSO YouTube page because we give you a video every time K-State adds a commitment in basketball and football. 
and uh, keeping you in the loop. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.